In this video, we're gonna take a look at the key differences between Google Analytics and Mixpanel and why you might want to install Mixpanel additionally to your Google Analytics setup. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there, and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and on this channel, we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials, and give you tips on better tracking just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now, if you are in the market for a new analytics tool, you might be asking yourself, what is actually the difference between all these different analytics tools? And obviously there is not one answer and one best tool that you can choose out there. It always depends on your business. Today, we wanna to take a look at the key differences between Google Analytics and Mixpanel. Now, I don't actually work too much with Mixpanel, but my friend Ruben from Practical Analytics is the perfect guy to ask because he works with different startups, setting up their analytics infrastructure and evaluating different tools for them like Google Analytics, Mixpanel or segment.com. So I asked Ruben to make a little video for us to discover the key differences between Google Analytics and Mixpanel and which tool might be better for which use case. Now we got lots to cover, so Ruben, take it away. Thanks, Julian, and hi, everybody. My name is Ruben, and I'm here to talk about the difference between Mixpanel and Google Analytics. And this is a question that come up, comes up quite a bit um, with the companies that I work with. And it's something that it's very confusing initially because they, they seem to do the same thing, right? Uh, why have two tools if you're going to do the same reports? But in reality, they're, they're slightly different, and they're actually complementary to each other. Now, what I want to talk about today is three things. Uh, first, I want to help you understand the differences in tracking philosophies between Google Analytics and Mixpanel. We'll talk a little bit about event-driven event tools versus page view tools. Uh, then I want to show you what Google Analytics is really good for, you know, what, what should you be using it for and, and why would you keep it. And third, uh, I'll show you what Mixpanel is good for. Uh, and then once, once you see that, then you'll see how they can be complementary and for some companies, why they keep both. So let's start with tracking philosophies. And to explain that, we're here at this website, we're here looking at Basecamp.com and they're a project management tool. Um, and this is a good example of, of a company that could benefit from keeping both tools. So for example, so Google Analytics is a page view driven tool. What that means is you add it to your website or your mobile app, and a user comes in, or they, you know, they refresh the page, or they, they view a page, and at that moment, Google Analytics tracks you, right? It says, hey, you, you loaded this page, and we have all this information about you as the user, your location, your IP address, your browser, all that. So I could, I could come in, and I could, you know, I could explore the Basecamp marketing website, right, to learn how Basecamp works. I could scroll in, you know, there'll be heat maps created here, maybe look at the price in, uh, look at some of the testimonials, and at some point I'll say, hey, I'm ready to sign up, right? So I'll look for the sign up page and come in here. And for, you know, for everything that I've done, Google Analytics is great because I've been viewing pages. I, maybe I came in from different marketing channels, which Google Analytics is really good at uh, breaking apart. And at some point I'm ready to sign up. Uh, this could be set up as a conversion goal in Google Analytics. And, and, and but we don't have you know, specific actions, right? Uh, which is where events come in. So looking at pages and getting ready to sign up, this is really great for Google Analytics. Once we sign up, right, once we go through this process, then we get thrown into the Basecamp product. If you're not familiar with the Basecamp product, it's similar to most project management tools. You can now create projects, you can create tasks, assign people tasks and so on. All those actions uh, will be much better as events. And that's where Mixpanel will come in, right? Mixpanel is an event-driven tool. So what that means is an event is simply something you send, either through JavaScript or other APIs or libraries to track actions that a user did. So an event for this website will be sign up, right? Once I submit this form, I, will, I could send an event to say the user signed up and send information alongside the event, such as the name or the email and so on. So, Inside the product, once we're inside the Basecamp product, there's lots of actions that I can take. I can create a project, I can create a task, I can assign task, I can complete task, and so on. Those are all tasks that 
may happen with page views as people are loading pages, but it makes more sense to look at them through events and not so much page views. So once we're in the product, it doesn't really matter if I view 10, 20 page views. What really matters is did I complete the actions that I'm supposed to complete. And if you're a product company, um, let's say you have a web app or mobile app like Basecamp does, uh, you're, you're much interested in looking at the actions that users took, not the page views they view, right? And that's, you know, that's where Mixpanel excels and that category of tools, the event-driven tools, right? So companies like Basecamp who have apps, um, who have this style of website, you know, have a marketing site and they have a web app or a mobile app, Mixpanel is really great for those companies. If you're, let's say, an e-commerce company or maybe a content company or uh, as a blog or something similar, Google Analytics would be really good for you and it'll be more than enough on what you need. Now, I mentioned before that Basecamp might actually keep both, which is true. Uh, Basecamp might keep Google Analytics as uh, the marketing analyzing tool and mix panel to analyze the product engagement, right? So let's let me show you what makes GA great, right? So we you know GA is the gold standard for analyzing marketing traffic. It gives you a lot of data out of the box and gives you a lot of reports to do that out of the box. You don't have to configure a lot of things. So for example, you know we might have the acquisition report, which you might be familiar with where we look at the different uh, channel groupings and look at the performance against a goal. Again, e-commerce sites will benefit quite a bit for the e-commerce integration that Google Analytics offers uh, that, that, that lets us analyze the market traffic. This is something that makes it doesn't really do well. In fact, it doesn't really do it at all. So analyzing market traffic is one of those things. I mentioned before that the e-commerce setup for Google Analytics, uh, it's perfect. For e-commerce companies, you can see your revenue, your conversion rate, transactions, and so on. And again, you can see it in, in the context of marketing and traffic, which is what we're looking at. And finally, uh, Google Analytics offers the, the multi-channel attribution uh, out of the box as well. So the whole theme is that if you're analyzing marketing traffic, if you're doing digital spending, um, if you want to see how, you, how you're performing against conversions, this is where Google Analytics comes in. And in fact, for companies, I usually recommend for them to keep Google Analytics for anything pre-sign up, right? Now we're assuming we're looking at a product company who has a web app. So you're gonna keep Google Analytics for anything pre-sign up, and you're gonna use a tool like Mixpanel for everything post-sign up. So a tool like Basecamp will keep Google Analytics to analyze everything that happens before a user signs up. Where are users coming from? What channels are driving those users? What's the conversion rate? How are the marketing pages working? What's the engagement of those pages? And then the user signs up, and at that moment, we can move over to something like Mixpanel and say, okay, what's the user doing? Are you going through the onboarding process? Are you doing action X or action Y, and so on. Um, finally, you know, in, in Google Analytics just gives you a lot, I mentioned some data out of the box, you know, data like the, the location data, to see where users are coming from and how is that compared to performance, you know, to conversion rates. And of course, uh, one of the popular reports in Google Analytics is just the, the mobile breakdown um, against performance again, I guess a, a conversion goal of some kind. Now let me jump into Mixpanel and show you what Mixpanel, what makes it great and why people, why people set up Mixpanel. So Mixpanel, the stuff for Mixpanel is, is much higher than Google Analytics. A, a typical project will take maybe 10, 20 hours to just get it going, and it'll take multiple months to become familiar with it, especially if you're implementing Mixpanel and giving it to a small team. You have to train everybody on how to use it. So first, uh, the first thing that brings people to Mixpanel is identifying users uh, by name or email specifically. So once you have Mixpanel, then you can actually look at uh, you can actually look at a user by their email and by their name and see exactly what they did, right? So each of these actions here are events that, that we sent to Mixpanel, and they're simply tracking the different actions that the user took, and and then be, you know what, what they were interacting with the with the app, with the web app or a mobile app in this case. So Google Analytics doesn't let you identify users by name or email. You're not allowed to set personal information, but Mixpanel lets you do that, right? So we can actually then take the email of a, of a user that we know, 
query it to Mixpanel, and then we'll get the profile. And we can see exactly what the user did over the past 90 days, uh, 100 days, ever since the user was identified by Mixpanel. And everything around Mixpanel is built around this idea that you're working with users um, and that you can track it back, right? The second report that uh, is, is really great in Mixpanel is the, the funnel report. So this uh, is a typical conversion funnel or marketing funnel that you might see before. Uh, what makes Mixpanel great is that this, this report can be built on the fly. So you can build them, you can build multiple reports and they're all retroactive, right? So you can build a report and you can see the data for the past 90 days. So the report is built on events. So, you know, we say, uh, Action one, action two, action three, action four. Coming back to our base camp example, right? A user signs up, we might be interested in seeing how they onboard. Right? And that might mean we want them to create a project, create a task, and invite someone, right? Those might be the three actions that we want a user to do before we consider them onboarded. So Mixfunnel can let us create that funnel with, uh, with three actions and then come in and see, okay, you know, are you just completing this onboarding funnel? Where are they getting stuck? And so on. And then of course, we can, we can segment this report um, and see how it breaks down by, by different things like city or, or country and so on. Uh, we get access to the same location data as Google Analytics. You know, this, this kind of funnel report is, is, is hard to find in Google Analytics just because of the way it is, uh, at least in the free version of Google Analytics. Um, so flexible funnels and being able to, to play around with the funnels is, is a big plus uh, for Mixpanel. Uh, the, thir the third thing that, that brings people to Mixpanel is, is the retention analysis. Uh, and this is the cohort analysis that you might be familiar with. Uh, we look at users who did one action, let's say users who signed up and then came back and did anything, right? They doesn't matter what they did, they, sh they should do anything. And then we can see that we can see the conversion rate. Uh, so, so we can see, you know, we can see how many users signed up a uh, specific week and then, and then see how many them came back and just redid any action, right? So this cohort analysis, once again, is based on users and it's based on, uh, it's, it's based on the, the users that we can then follow in the profiles and go understand them. So we might find a user who's, who has a really high retention rate uh, and then we can just simply go and see who they are, what they did, what are their attributes. How can we replicate those kind of users? And finally, Mixpanel, and a lot of tools are really moving to, in this direction, but they're moving to help you do the analysis, right? So, so what that means is we're, we're starting to see, for example, we can look at one action and, and then see how that correlates with, let's say, fourth week retention, right? So what this means is we want to understand if, if two in a specific action, let's take a Basecamp pro project, Right? If people create projects, does that correlate with people being retained in the fourth week? Maybe, maybe not, right? So this is the kind of analysis that now Mixpanel is starting to offer, uh, doing the analysis for you, running the math for you. And this is something that I'm also starting to see companies come into Mixpanel just for this kind of report, right? Where they can get, get the data to Mixpanel and then simply run this report uh, quite quickly without having to do very complex manual analysis on the side. And like I mentioned, you know, in most companies, you're gonna have both, and that's fine, right? I could see a company like Basecamp having Google Analytics for everything marketing related and having a tool like Mixpanel for everything product related, right? And if you're a content company, like a blog, or if you're an e-commerce company, you might actually be fine with just Google Analytics because you'll be able to get everything that you need in one tool. Except for today, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thanks everyone. All right, so there you have it. These are the main differences between Google Analytics and Mixpanel. In my mind, Google Analytics and Mixpanel as well has a whole different worldview on the data itself. So Mixpanel is more event-driven and if you value the post sign-up as very important in the lifetime of your customer, then it might be worth tracking that with an additional tool like Mixpanel. Well, thanks Ruben for putting this video together for us. If you want to find out more about what Ruben is up to, then head over to practicalanalytics.com where he also has some great resources, a free uh, Mixpanel course, a free segment.com course. So um, check that out as well. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up 
and hit that subscribe button as well because we'll bring you new videos every Wednesday. My name is Julian. Till next time.